So when the Institute of Medicine report came out in 2011, I went and read it in detail because I started treating patients in a hospital in Cincinnati who I discovered were deficient back starting in 2009. And I had to figure out what to do. So I really did a lot of literature searching. And I came up with a protocol based on the evidence that I found in the literature. And when the Institute of Medicine came out, their recommendations were were completely different than what I was doing. And they were basically saying that what I was doing was wrong. It should, I shouldn't be doing what I'm doing. But I knew that what I was doing was really solidly based on the literature, evidence-based, and it was working well. Nobody was getting hurt, you know. And I, I followed Dr. Heaney's protocol where he, when he, he published in 2003, where he did a study where he showed 5,000 units a day, 10,000 units a day, two different groups were safe over five months in healthy volunteers. And he compared them to placebo and, and 1,000 units a day. And I, I found a lot of toxicity studies. And every article that I read seemed to say, you know, the body makes 10,000 to 20,000 units of vitamin D a day in the skin from sunshine. So I figured, well, all my patients were straight out of ICUs and were sent over to our hospital, which was a long-term acute care hospital. A lot of them were on prolonged mechanical ventilation on two feet. They hadn't seen sunshine in months. And they weren't getting any vitamin D in there in their um, tooth feeds, because they, they mostly were getting NG tooth feeds or peg tubes or um, or uh, pick lines, mineral nutrition. And, and um, some of them were undetectable. You know, 60% were less than 32 nanograms per ml, which was lower than mineral at that time. And I started writing up reports because of what the Institute of Medicine said and what I was doing, and, and just to show that what I was doing was really evidence-based and, and safe. And it was in direct contrast to what the Institute of Medicine recommended, because when you go and look at their report, there's a lot of deficiencies in that report. Even though it's 662 pages long, it's got multiple sections, it's got hundreds of references. They've, and, you know, for example, in, in one, one section is on autoimmune diseases. And they and they say there isn't any evidence yet that vitamin D is effective for treating autoimmune diseases. You know, their, their whole conclusion was the only two diseases, the only diseases that vitamin D could be conclusively, or they had conclusive evidence that it was beneficial for health was, was bone disease, hmm. rickets, and osteoporosis. Everything else was subject to debate. Well, I had found articles from the 30s and 40s that it cured rickets, it cured tuberculosis, it controlled psoriasis, it controlled rheumatoid arthritis, and it controlled asthma. You know, but it fell out of favor and because they were using super physiologic doses and causing hypercalcemia. People were getting sick and said, well, we're using way too much of this stuff. So they cut weight down too low. It's like 400 units a day. And they never tried any doses in between. And the lower doses wouldn't cure anything or control anything. Mm -hmm. But the but the, in the psoriasis literature, it got resurrected in the 80s when a group in Japan was treating somebody with osteoporosis with one hydroxy vitamin D3 Morimoto's group, and he had, he had psoriasis and it cleared up. And so they thought, well, why did that happen? So they found some people, more people with psoriasis. They treated them with it was one hydroxy vitamin D3, which is approved for treating osteoporosis, and it kept clearing up the psoriasis. So that resurrected the treatment of psoriasis with vitamin D, and it's been going on ever since. And do you know how many times the Institute of Medicine mentions the word psoriasis in that 662-page report? Probably zero. Zero. Mm -hmm. In the whole in the section on autoimmune diseases, they didn't talk about it. How do you do that? How do you miss that? You know, and that's just one example of, of a major glaring problem with their report. Mm -hmm. Another major glaring problem. The body is, you know, I mentioned earlier, the body it's been documented. The body can make 10,000, 25,000 units a day. One of the references I sent to you, TCB stamp in 1977, shows a really nice example of that. That's one of the first publications where they actually try to estimate how much the body makes in response to 
full body sun exposure. So I'll try to be radiation. Well, they cited that article in there, but they didn't talk about the fact that it made 10,000, 20,000 units a day. They, they said that it's a complicated process to how the body makes vitamin D. There's so many factors that affect it. You know, the time of the year, the time of the day, your skin type, you know, whether you're wearing clothing or not, sunscreen. And they're right, it is complicated, but they said it's so complicated, we can't really give you good advice about it. So we're going to just say, we don't want you to get any sunshine because sunshine can cause skin cancer. We don't want to let anybody get skin cancer. So we're going to assume all the vitamin D you need can come from your diet. Well, there's nothing in your diet unless you're eating cod liver oil. You know, there's nothing substantial, nothing that would come close to 10,000 units a day. And when you take phototherapy, phototherapy has been used to cure rickets, cure tuberculosis, and control psoriasis. It'll probably control every autoimmune disease because it restores the vitamin D status, right? And in the, and in the paper I published about the uh, psoriasis review that I did, that was published in 2021, I included the data from that I could find. I looked for any psoriasis study that I could find that had baseline vitamin D data and then on treatment vitamin D data. And, in the, and I found several phototherapy studies. And when you look at the on treatment 25 hydroxy vitamin D data in people whose psoriasis clears up with phototherapy, you get levels over 100. The highest level I've ever found was 159 in the study published in 1996, who the first author was Krastowski. 159. And, and a couple other studies, they were over 100. So how does the Institute of Medicine say you can't get over 50? It might kill you. These are naturally obtaining values with people who are treated with UV phototherapy and it's ultraviolet radiation that turns 7 dehydrated cholesterol in the skin into 20, and the vitamin D3, which undergoes hydroxylation reaction in the skin to become 25 hydroxy vitamin D3. And that floats around in the blood until it's needed to turn into 125. So if that's happening and a disease gets completely under control and the renal function is normal and the calcium is normal, how is that a bad thing? It's not, you know, so and that was one of the points of that paper for writing that paper, because that, lit that literature was, that study was from 1996. How did they miss it? You know, the, this the Institute of Medicine Committee, I mean, they missed it. Mm -hmm. One other study was from a guy named Ryan. The first author was Ryan from Ireland, where they did a UBB phototherapy study with patients with psoriasis. They had a control group that they didn't treat, and then the patients with psoriasis, they, got, they get the ultraviolet radiation. And everybody that got the radiation got better within one to four months. People that didn't get radiation under psoriasis stayed there. They treated with the ultraviolet radiation until the skin essentially completely cleared. It took one to four months. And they measured vitamin D levels, 25 hydroxy D levels before and after. And they got a couple of patients that were over 100 within four months. You know, so if and you some of them were starting out at, at what levels? You know, that's that was the other point of the, the paper was, you know, the Institute of Medicine says, all you need is a level of 20, 25 hydroxy vitamin D, get a level of 20 nanograms per ml, don't go above 50, that's normal. That should be good enough for 95% of the patients. Well, if you look at the baseline 25 hydroxy vitamin D levels in people with psoriasis, they fall within that range. They, they range from 20 to 80. And you treat them with vitamin D, sunshine, phototherapy, and they get better. You know, in 600 units, it's a fraction of 10,000. It's a fraction of 25,000. It's not enough to control the genes that body D controls. Mm -hmm. So there are really serious problems with the report that nobody's talked about. You know, and why haven't they? they I know that they know that vitamin D controls psoriasis. Why haven't they come out and talked about it? They're still trying to figure out what diseases it will control. And they're not acknowledging the literature that shows that it already has control. I'm the chief of medical services at the state psychiatric hospital. It's 291 beds. And they have, if we were fully staffed and we're not, we would have about 15 or 16 psychiatrists and four non-psychiatric internal medicine or family practice doctors. So we manage a lot more patients than they do. I've at least got people under me flying in to giving everybody five or 10,000 a day. Some of them, didn't feel comfortable with 10, they put them on five. I didn't argue with them. 
And then, and that turned out to be a good thing because then I had this data I could show between 5,000 and 10,000, just like he did, but I could show it for seven years. He did it for five months, you know, but, but now I have a reason to say, well, look, you got to do 10,000 because 5,000 doesn't turn on as many genes as 10,000. 10,000 may not be enough. You know? People are afraid to use more than 4,000 a day. Okay. So a lot of the studies, we need studies with different diseases using different doses of vitamin D, 10,000. 20,000, 30,000, 40,000, 50,000, to see how much do you need? You know, I don't, I can't give you the answer because people are too afraid to do it. You know, th there's a lot of studies out in the literature right now you, where you can read where they're using 800 units a day or 2,000 units a day or 4,000 units a day. There were two studies published recently and I talked about them, they were asthma studies and I talked about them in my psoriasis paper because these asthma studies, one was in a group of adults and one was in a group of children and they compared 4,000 units of vitamin D versus placebo. There were two different studies, and they both concluded that vitamin D didn't have any benefit in treating the asthma. They never considered that it was a dose response problem. Okay, mm -hmm. they said use 4,000, that's as much as the Institute of Medicine said to use. Didn't work, vitamin D didn't help asthma. Well, in the 30s, vitamin D helped asthma. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I discovered that, and the body makes 10,000 units a day. I started asking everybody at work. At Drake's and hey, you got to ask me, nobody with asthma. We tried this for them, and they tried it, and it worked every time. 10,000 units a day made asthma get better. One of the reasons why I had the support of the administration in that summit when I first got there, I'm coming in, they don't know who I am. I want everybody on Friday with the 10,000 units a day. Well, who are you and what are you talking about? You know, well, it turned out the CEO and the assistant CEO both had asthma, and the assistant CEO was a nurse. I became good friends with him. As soon as I found out he had asthma, I started educating him. I said, Jeff, man, you got to take this vitamin D. It's going to help your asthma. We started taking 10,000 and he started feeling better. He cut back to 5,000 once and he had a bad asthma attack. And he said, man, I was on vacation. I had a bad asthma attack. I said, well, what happened? You take your vitamin D? Yeah. Well, we figured out he had cut from 10,000 to 5,000. It didn't work. But now he's been on it ever since. And I've read in a couple of my publications, we talk about his response with vitamin D to asthma in two of the publications that I have in the Journal of Steroid Biochemistry and Molecular Biology. And he sat on about 20, 25,000 units a day, and he doesn't have to take any asthma medicines. And he's one of these guys, you know, asthma, before COVID came, I was really focused on asthma and psoriasis because there's a lot of literature. But asthma kills me. You know, and what a terrible way to die. You know, over 4,000 people a year in the United States, with last estimate that I could find, die from asthma every year. By suffocating, you know, and none of them are on vitamin D. I guarantee you. If you could get all the asthma patients on 10,000, 20,000 units of vitamin D, I mean, we need to figure out what is the best dose. That's the research that needs to be done. We got to get stop being afraid of using physiologic doses of vitamin D. You know, if you keep using subphysiologic doses of vitamin D, you're going to keep coming to the same conclusion. Well, it doesn't help. It doesn't help. Yeah, no kidding. Let's stop doing that. Let's start using these doses and see how much it helps, because you know, if you can take them 1.8 million units a day for two months and you're not going to die, then you can probably take 10,000 units a day for a few months and not you're not going to die. And let's see if that helps asthma, psoriasis, and rheumatoid arthritis, and multiple sclerosis, Parkinson's disease, and, you know, you name it. 